Another apportionment method is known as Huntington field number. When there is a need to add one item to one of the several groups in a population, the additional one item is given to the group with the highest Huntington Hill number. So this is based on this formula. So D squared over A times A plus 1, where G is the size of the group and A is the current number of items assigned to the group. Okay, so let's have the solution to this example. The table below shows the number of computers that are assigned to the five departments of a university in Manila and the number of students enrolled in this department. So to which department a new computer should be assigned using the Huntington Hill method? So you have the first column, the department, and then the number of students, and then followed by the number of computers assigned, so R and D. Okay, so go to my Excel solution. Okay, so the first column will be the group size. Okay, so denote this by G and then for letter A, the, the current um, allocation. Okay, and then we use the formula to select G, base to the power 2, all over, select A, times select A plus 1, and then enclose with parenthesis. Okay, and then move the cursor downward to copy the formula. Okay, and then check the the one with the highest uh, value of H. In this case, uh, mechanical uh, engineering department has the highest value of H. And therefore, the additional uh, computer should be given to the mechanical engineering department. Now let's talk about the furnace criterion and a portion paradoxes. The quota criterion states that the number of allocations given to a subset of a population is the standard quota, or one more than the standard quota. The final apportionment using Hamilton method always yields to either equal to the lower quota or one higher than the lower quota. Thus, Hamilton method always satisfies the quota criteria. The way the modified standard divisor is chosen, it is possible that both Jefferson and Webster may violate this criteria. The Huntington Hill method may also violate the quota criteria. Now let's talk about the paradoxes in Hamilton method. Paradoxical outcomes may exist using Hamilton method. Although the Hamilton method satisfies the quota criteria, it may sometimes result to apportionment paradoxes, which may occur when there is a change in the sizes of the group the required number of allocation, and the number of groups. For example, a change in the uh, population of a group may result to losing one or more items to a group with relatively lower population. An increase in the number of items to be apportioned may result to a lower apportionment to some groups even though the populations of the groups are not changed. So paradoxes cannot occur in Jefferson, Webster, and Huntington-Hillman. 
Un unfortunately, all apportionment methods are not perfect and actually have some flaws, which was proved by Mikhail Balinski and Peyton Young. So according to them, it is mathematically impossible to develop an apportionment method that can avoid all these types of paradoxes and at the same time can satisfy the quota criteria. For more examples and exercises, the ebook is available from the link provided below. Thank you.